Hey, it's Mike here, and today, ways to reduce microplastic exposure. It seems like every other day now we have some new headline of where microplastics have made it. The most recent one was surprisingly high levels in Antarctica. Thanks, scientists. Or some new part of our body that they found microplastics. Next is gonna be like our fingernails or maybe even our thoughts. Well, I guess I'm thinking about it right now, so we've already gotten there. So we're gonna look at the three main areas of microplastics exposure, which are air, food, and water. Now forget the ancient Greeks, it appears our modern four fundamental elements are now air, food, water, and plastic. But I do wanna emphasize, we're not sure to what degree these are dangerous for long-term health. We'll cover a couple health studies, but we do know that stress is also not good. So I don't think we need to get too in our heads about these. Also don't get too in your head about getting in your head about these, and I should probably just stop. Let's go. So in terms of how dangerous mycoplastics are and whether it's the physical abrasion or some type of chemical reaction that's happening within our body, we could just really quickly look at an overview from this study. A mycoplastics under certain size can cross membranes in our body and have been linked to inflammation, immune response, hormone disruption, cholesterol alteration, and more. And a recent study from the New England Journal of Medicine looking at heart attack and stroke and death overall in people with plaques found that those with microplastics in their plaques had four and a half times the risk of those events, which has cardiovascular researchers saying things like, quote, very, very, very few things have that much of a risk. Though I should say it could be an association. People who have those microplastics might be doing other bad behaviors. We'll get into some of those connections later. But let's get started with the first area, which I believe is the most underestimated, and that is microplastics and inhalation and how to reduce that risk. Well, from this study, they estimate that roughly half of microplastic ingestion in general is from inhalation, from breathing them in. And from this study in particular, chronic exposure of breathing it in could lead to respiratory and cardiovascular disease. And there's two really important facts here. One is that we spend 90% of our time indoors, disturbing unto itself, but also from another study that looked at the breakdown of dust indoors, 39% of that household dust is plastic. Disgusting, unless you think about what the rest of that dust probably is. So what might be one of our main weapons in the war against indoor air plastic? Well, a vacuum. Yup, something as simple as that. From studies like this are shown to be greatly associated with lower microplastics loading into your mouth. The recommendation is to do that with the windows open or maybe even use like a cheap KN95 mask if you feel like there's a lot of that plastic dust in there. And so it's all about just sucking up that dust when it's nearly half plastic. Well, what else might do that? An air filter, in particular an air filter that has a HEPA filter, which can get those smaller particles. And then of course it can't hurt to just lower the total amount of plastic related things in your house, materials like microfiber clothing and carpet and furniture that could shed this stuff if you are able to afford this. It seems like almost every solution has some cost here, which is frustrating. And then finally, you can just live completely outdoors if you're not in a really polluted area because you know, if you die of exposure, then microplastics didn't get you first. Anyway, let's move on to the next area of microplastics exposure, which is food. Food and water are nearly half of your microplastics exposure. And we've known for a while, for example, that fish is a you know, quite often contaminated source with microplastics. We have a ton of studies on that. And as this study's graphic shows, yeah, microplastics can bioaccumulate up the aquatic food chain to a degree. But a recent study put this a little bit more into context showing that, yeah, the initial plastic content of a raw food source is gonna be amplified or just completely overshadowed by how it is processed and how much it is processed on various plastic containing equipment. A recent study looked at various protein sources and well, yeah, wild fish was definitely higher than some other sources like tofu, which was a rock bottom there. Uh, yeah, we had processed fish as the highest of any food there. And then that was followed by chicken nuggets as well as plant-based nuggets. So get your plastic nuggets here. Main ingredient, 
old conveyor belt. It's also important to remember that you're continuing to process your food at home when you are preparing and cooking it. So things like plastic cutting boards could be another major source with this study saying that, you know, it could be up to 50 grams per year of microplastics that you're getting from, you know, chopping stuff on your plastic cutting board, depending on the type of plastic. Then there's of course, you know, using containers that aren't plastic, reducing takeout containers and just the amount of time that your food is touching plastic. And there's also a whole nother issue issue of these chemicals that are carried by plastic as well. One of them is PFAS, various PFASs, which are known as that forever chemical. And there was a really interesting point from a video I did in the past showing that people who eat meat have about 50% higher levels of certain PFAS than people who are vegan that don't eat meat. In fact, the longer that people are vegan, the lower levels of PFAS they have in their blood. And this brings me to another really interesting point. Well, those vegans might've had lower exposure to PFAS and maybe chemicals in food. It could also be that they are able to prevent as much from entering into their bloodstream, which brings me to one of my favorite topics, Fiber. As this paper mentions, increasing the diet's content of dietary fiber could be an important factor for pooping out those plastic materials. And yeah, dietary fiber increases stool volume and it can prevent certain digestive enzymes from breaking down those plastics further, which could help them enter the bloodstream. All right, now let's just move right along to water. And this study has a map of other studies and where they found microplastics in bottled versus tap water. So I should just say right off the bat, yeah, bottled water is the number one thing that you wanna drop ASAP. Another study found that you get about 20 times more microplastics in bottled water than you do in tap water in general. It's almost like you're drinking directly out of a plastic container. So obviously if you can get a reusable water bottle that's like glass or metal, then you're gonna be better off. But maybe you're like, I don't drink plastic bottled water anyway, but I would like to lower it in tap water. Well, there was that recent study that made a ton of headlines saying, oh, boil your tap water and that will get rid of the microplastics. It binds with the calcium. However, those headlines did not mention that you also need to use a coffee filter after that. So yeah, this is really impractical and uses quite a bit of energy. So if you are able to afford it, there are various water filters that can get the job done. This study looked at point of use filters of different types and found that filters with membranes in particular do well. Smaller the membrane, the better. If you can get those 0.2 microns, you're gonna be doing even better though. The difference isn't huge for those. However, you don't want one that is just a carbon filter because in this case, one of those actually increased the amount of microplastics. My guess it was a new filter made of plastic. And there's another quick area I wanna mention past these three areas, and that is about not just reducing the amount you intake, but the amount that you output, and then hopefully lowering the amount that we all intake. And one of those habits, again, brings us back to fish because as this study mentions, 46% of the larger plastic particles in the ocean are from fishing gear and about 300 tons per year comes directly from even a certain type of fishing net. Another one that's pretty easy is using microfiber catching laundry bags, which are pretty cheap. And that way, you know, if you have any microfiber clothing, it's not just going right out the drain of your laundry. And then another big one is tires. This one's wildly underestimated by most people, but a large contributor, so don't drive as much. And then finally, of course, there's reducing single use plastics. These are personal habits, but all of these can be influenced by pressure on governments, you know, change laws around single use plastics and recycling in general and increasing public transportation, which wouldn't emit as much, you're getting the idea. And then finally, for some good news, there is a new type of plastic that has recently been tested and doesn't produce microplastics. I doubt it's the first one ever, but they tested it in this context and it is made of algae. So you can see from this chart here, at the end there, you got no plastics left compared to another plastic like EVA, which is still loaded there. So going forward, we'll see if it delivers by not delivering microplastics. Anyway, looking at those three areas of exposure, it's pretty obvious that there's simple steps that we can take to lower the amount that's entering our body and hopefully our risk which is again, still unknown. And I'll add that physical contact with plastic and microplastics is another way it can enter our body, but it didn't seem to be as much of a driving force for disease in terms of the mechanism, et cetera. But you know, maybe topic for a future video. And I just wanna say with the amount of filter related things and potential products that I could have mentioned, but didn't try to sell you, 
Uh, I should just say, if you want to support me, you could of course go to my Patreon or you know check out my new ebook, Level Five Vegan, if you would like to. And of course, if there is some microplastics reduction strategy that I forgot to mention in here, I'm sure there is. Let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.